LG and Sony are two OLED powerhouses in the industry, and today we'll be comparing their latest offerings in this category, the LG C1 and the Sony A80J. We'll take a look at what's different between them, if anything, and how they can differentiate from one another for different use cases. Hi, I'm Brandon, a test developer at Ratings.com, where we help you find the best products for your needs. First, we'll look at the design and smart features of the two models, and then we'll see how they stack up for various use cases from our website. Then, we'll end with a quick verdict and answer a couple of your questions as part of our ratings hashtag. We bought and tested each TV in the 55-inch model. They're also available in a 65-inch and a 77-inch model, which is no coincidence since they are likely using the same panels. The LG is also available in a 48 and 83-inch variant, which is great as there are many options for a variety of setups. For each of these sizes, we expect them to perform the same as the ones we have today. So we're going to get into the performance soon, but let's quickly take a look at the design of each TV. The C1 looks a lot like last year's C10. It has a center mounted stand and it looks premium all around. The stand is nearly as wide as the TV itself and it sits low to the ground, which can be an issue if you have a soundbar. The A80J also has a premium look, but it's different from the C1. Instead of a center mounted stand, it has two feet that are wide set apart. In its default setup, the Sony also sits close to the ground, but luckily it has a much more versatile stand. The metal feet can adjust to three different positions. Around the back, the C1 looks much like the older C10. It's a mix of metal and plastic, and the bottom half, where the inputs are, has etched horizontal lines. On the other hand, the back of the A80J has a bit more character, which can be more divisive, but you won't be looking at the back much anyways. Weirdly, there isn't anything for cable management except for a cable tie that's included in the box. The build quality on the LG is fantastic. It feels incredibly well built, and it's made of both plastic and metal throughout. The plastic on the back flexes a bit near the inputs, but it's really nothing to be considered about. The A80J also feels incredibly built, better than the LG. It's more solid and there isn't as much flex near the inputs. In reality, they both feel premium and you're getting a well-built TV for the price. Both TVs have similar inputs. They have four HDMI inputs each, but on the LG, all four support HDMI 2.1, whereas the Sony only has HDMI 2.1 on two of the ports. They each support HDR10 and Dolby Vision HDR formats, but not HDR10+. As for audio pass-through, the Sony wins here because it supports both Dolby Digital and DTS formats, whereas the LG only supports Dolby Digital. So you won't have to worry about compatibility if using an audio device with the Sony. Now let's go through the smart features of each TV. Even though we assign a score to the interface, it's completely subjective, and choosing one over the other really comes down to personal preference. The LG comes with a new version of their web OS. It's different from past years because you now get a full home page instead of just a banner at the bottom. The interface feels easier to use than the Google TV on the Sony. Speaking of which, the Sony also comes with a redesigned interface. Google TV replaces Android TV in name, but in reality, there's little difference between them besides a facelift. Here, the menu navigation feels smoother than the LG. Also, there are a ton of apps you can download through each of the app stores, and you can cast anything you want from your phone. The C1 also comes with a redesigned remote in 2021. It's the same magic remote that we've come to love over the years, except it has a flatter design. You get shortcut buttons to popular streaming services and voice control through the built-in mic. What stands out about this remote versus the Sony is that you can use it like a point and press remote, almost like a Wii remote. You still get a bunch of features with the Sony remote, although it lacks a nifty point and press feature. Like the LG remote, it has some shortcut buttons to popular apps. Looking at the voice control, you can access Google Assistant and Alexa through the LG remote, so you can choose the one you prefer. The voice control on the LG allows you to change inputs and open apps, but you can't change certain settings like the backlight. You only get Google Assistant with the Sony, and you can ask for many of the same commands. However, you can also ask it to change some settings like the backlight. Open YouTube. Now let's get into the details and see how these TVs compare for different usages. We separate the usages by movies, HDR, TV shows, sports, video games, and PC use. And at the end, we'll analyze the overall performance of those two TVs. First off, we'll look at how good these TVs are for watching movies. We focus mostly on movie performance in a dark room, so there's a large weight on the contrast ratio, which is a very important aspect of picture quality. 
This is the difference between the brightest white and the darkest black, and OLED TVs are excellent in this regard. This is because of how they're able to turn off each individual pixel. This results in a near infinite contrast ratio and perfect black levels. Each of these TVs is a fantastic choice for watching movies in the dark because of how they can produce deep, inky blacks. Another important factor for movies in the dark is the local dimming performance. And since they're each OLEDs, they don't have a local dimming backlight, so there won't be any blooming around objects in dark scenes. And thanks to the per pixel illumination, the black uniformity is also perfect. Any dark scenes like a star field or fireworks will look nice and contrasty. Movies are often shot in low frame rates, which can make content look stuttery when you're watching the movie. OLEDs have a quick response time, so there's often a ton of stutter with low frame rate content because each frame is held on for longer. Both TVs have motion interpolation features that can take low frame rate content and bring it up to 120 FPS to help with the appearance of motion. Also, each TV is able to remove 24p judder from any source, which helps with motion with 24 FPS movies. You can learn more about how judder and stutter work here. Each TV is so similar when it comes to watching movies, but one difference we noticed between them was out of the box color accuracy. Although this applies to any use, it's definitely important for having an accurate image when watching your favorite movie. The accuracy on the Sony is much better with both colors and white balance. Accuracy can vary between units, so it's possible RC1 is worse than others, but Sony TVs are well known for their accurate color reproduction. So if that's important to you, you should be happy with the Sony. Overall, both TVs are fantastic for watching movies in dark rooms. There really is no noticeable difference between the two unless you look at color accuracy, in which case the Sony wins. Let's look at HDR movies. High Dynamic Range, or HDR, is a video format that increases detail in both dark and bright objects. Once again, it's important to have a good contrast for a satisfying HDR experience, and neither TV fails in this regard. Blacks look deep and inky when watching your favorite HDR content. If contrast helps with darker details, then brightness helps with bright details in HDR. OLEDs don't tend to get extremely bright, and both the LG and Sony are pretty standard for this. Their HDR brightness is okay, and it's enough to make some highlights stand out, but not all of them. The LG gets brighter by about 30 nits in our real scene test, and the Sony gets a bit brighter in some window sizes. There's less brightness variation between different content on the Sony, so brightness drops with large bright scenes may be slightly less distracting. At the end of the day, you won't be able to tell much difference in brightness between either TV. For HDR content, you also want a TV that can produce a wide range of colors, which is known as the color gamut. The color gamuts between the C1 and A80J are similar, and they're both very wide. You won't be able to notice any difference between each, but because our LG has bad color accuracy, it doesn't map colors very well. This means that some colors don't look how they're supposed to. Another important part of HDR content is gradient handling. This is important if you tend to watch scenes with different shades of the same color, like a sunset, and you don't want to see any banding. While the LG has great gradient handling, the Sony is much better, and you shouldn't notice much, if any, banding on that. Both TVs have a feature to smooth out gradients as well, but this can cause loss in fine details. Like with movies, you won't really see any difference when watching HDR content between the two, but the A80J scores a bit higher because of its improved gradient handling and color accuracy. By the way, if you enjoy our content, please make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos and check out our website for the full review and more. By subscribing, you're helping us reach a wider audience and in turn, helping you find the best products for your needs. Also, visit the product deal page on our website right here. You'll find all available sizes from our affiliates presented in a convenient way. Now, let's talk about the performance for watching TV shows, and they're pretty even here. First off, let's look at the viewing angles, which is important if you watch shows with the entire family or if you tend to watch TV from the side. Since each TV is an OLED, they have very wide viewing angles, so the image remains accurate from the side. The LG scores better because color starts to shift earlier than on the Sony, but you really won't notice a difference between them. If you watch TV during the day in a bright room, it's important to have a TV with good reflection handling. This is where the LG has an advantage because its anti-reflective coating absorbs more light. Even direct light sources don't pose any issue for this TV. As for the Sony, it's still fantastic, but it has a different screen finish that doesn't handle reflections as well. It also gives off a hazy purple tint with strong light sources. On top of the reflection handling, it's important to have a TV with a high peak brightness if you watch during the day. OLEDs don't tend to get extremely bright, and these TVs are no exception. In SDR, they actually have about the same peak brightness at about 300 nits, and you won't be able to differentiate the two. This is enough to fight some glare in a room with a few light sources around, but probably not enough if you place it opposite of a window with direct sunlight. 
although the excellent reflection handling will help in those cases. Overall, each TV is great for watching TV shows, and the main difference is that the LG handles reflections better. If you're planning to watch the big game with a few friends, you need many of the same characteristics as if you're watching TV shows. A TV with wide viewing angles, good reflection handling, and high brightness is ideal for watching sports in a large room with a few lights on. As mentioned, each TV is about the same for these things. The LG does have better reflection handling, but unless you're in a very bright room, it shouldn't make much of a difference. When watching sports, there's often fast moving content, so it's important to have good motion handling. This is yet another area where the TVs are pretty equal. OLEDs are known for their near instant response times, which is the time it takes for pixels to change from one color to the next. This can cause a blurry trail behind moving objects, but this isn't the case with either TV because of the fast response times. Again, this fast response time can cause stutter with some content, in which case there's always motion interpolation on both units. Overall, both TVs are excellent for watching sports. The LG scores better according to our testing because it has wider viewing angles and better reflection handling, but it's not too noticeable. Now let's check out the gaming performance of these two TVs, and this is where the LG is a clear winner. We've established the picture quality on both of these units is amazing thanks to the OLED panel, so any game will look spectacular. But how will they feel to play? Well, when you're playing games, you want everything to feel smooth and responsive, and this is where input lag comes in. This is the delay between when you input an action and when it appears on screen. This is important for reaction-based games because you don't want any delay as it can make the difference between winning and losing. And high input lag just doesn't feel fun to play on. The C1 wins here because it has lower input lag by a few milliseconds compared to the A80J. This might make a difference for extremely competitive gamers, but in reality, most people will be happy on both TVs. For gaming, you also want fast-moving content to look smooth. Since each TV has a near instant response time, there's no ghosting, which helps keep motion blur low. If you notice motion blur, each TV has a way to reduce it with a black frame insertion feature, or BFI. They do this by inserting black frames in between each frame in an attempt to reduce motion blur. For each TV, the BFI features work at either 60 or 120 FPS, which can significantly reduce motion blur. However, it's not for everyone because it can look distracting and reduce the total screen brightness. Finally, let's talk about the refresh rate and variable refresh rate support on each TV, and the LG has an advantage here. Each TV has a 120Hz panel with HDMI 2.1 support, so you can play 4K games up to 120fps from either the PS5 or Xbox Series X. However, the main difference is that the LG has VRR support to reduce screen tearing, which the Sony doesn't have yet. The LG has both HDMI 4 and VRR and FreeSync support, and it's G-Sync compatible, so it will work with virtually any device. The Sony currently doesn't have any VRR, but Sony has said it will come in a future firmware update. And as mentioned before, the LG has four HDMI 2.1 ports, so you can have each console and a PC hooked up to the TV and still have an extra HDMI 2.1 port free. The Sony only has two HDMI 2.1 ports, which is a bit more limiting. On top of all that, the A80J also has a limited auto game mode function, as it only works with Sony consoles. On the other hand, LG can switch into game mode with any console or PC that supports the feature. All in all, the C1 is the better choice for gaming, thanks to its VRR and ALLM features and more HDMI 2.1 ports. The gaming experience on the Sony is passable, but for anyone who cares about gaming, they'll want to go with the LG instead. As for HDR gaming, the conclusion is pretty much the same. Both TVs are using similar OLED panels, so they'll deliver an amazing HDR picture. It's also worth mentioning that on the Sony, we did notice some color banding and posterization when sending a 4K 120Hz HDR signal, which you can check out in our previous video here. Yet another reason to prefer the LG in this regard. Finally, let's talk about the performance as a PC monitor. There are a few factors that go into our scoring that we've already talked about, like viewing angles. Whether you sit extremely close to the screen or if you need to share the screen with people around you, you want wide viewing angles. These TVs do have wide viewing angles, so that you'll see an accurate image no matter where you sit. Many gaming aspects are important if you plan on playing PC games. And as we established, the LG is the better of the two thanks to its VRR and ALM support, along with more HDMI 2.1 ports. Low input lag and fast response time is also important here, and both are great in this regard. Supporting multiple resolutions is also important for PC usage, for office work and games alike. LG wins again in this category because it can display a 1440p resolution with a 120Hz refresh rate, which the Sony cannot. 
This is key for PC gaming because it allows you to drop the resolution to increase the frame rate without putting too much stress on your graphics card. Each TV is also able to display Chroma 444 properly, which helps increase text clarity. All things considered, the LG wins in the PC category because of its better gaming features and 1440p support. However, keep in mind that it may not be ideal to use OLEDs as PC monitors due to the permanent burn-in risk. Before ending it out, let's briefly compare the sound quality. Both TVs are pretty decent in this regard, with the Sony having a slight advantage thanks to its improved bass extension. It'll sound a bit punchier than the LG in the low frequencies. But anyone shopping around for a TV in this price bracket will likely have a speaker or soundbar setup to match the amazing picture quality. So in conclusion, the TVs are pretty much the same when it comes to picture quality and any difference is related to specific features. Choosing one over the other really comes down to how you're going to use it. If you want to use it for gaming and you need the VRR support, you can't go wrong with the LG. If you want something with good color accuracy, Sony rarely fails to disappoint in this regard. Each TV is similarly priced, which could make the decision even harder. But if you need a 48 inch or 83 inch size, the C1 is the best bet. Now that we're done, let's finish off by answering some of the questions you had for us. The two most common questions we received was how does the upscaling and motion interpolation compare between these two TVs? These are great questions, but unfortunately we can't answer them very well at the moment. Our current testing for upscaling and motion interpolation is fairly primitive, so according to our results, they perform similarly. Although in practice, this may not be the case. This is a flaw in our testing and an area we hope to improve in the future. We're always looking to provide the best reviews possible, and we'd like to thank everyone who have brought these issues up to us. Your feedback is always appreciated. So that's it. What do you think of the Sony A80J and the LG C1? Which one are you leaning towards and why? Let us know below. Also, we're a growing company and are expanding into other product categories. As a result, we are currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you wanna help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. You can check out all of the measurements on our website. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for early access to our latest results first. So that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.